Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vinny Ezzel back in another Card Fight Vanguard deck profiles. If you guys enjoyed, don't like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. Let's start, shall we? So, normally I wouldn't have done this unless we got all the cards reviewed, but I'm starting to think but she's just gonna reveal one card at a time and I really need to get these releases out. But I do genuinely think we're probably not gonna get another Overlord reveal. If we do get an Overlord support card reveal, then I'll just put it down in the comments what I would swap it with if I choose to swap anything with it. But as you can see, we're doing Kagro Overlord. Kagro Overlord is a really, like it's the generic Kagro deck, AKA Overlord of the Clan, because Overlord is basically the only thing that exists in Kagro and if it doesn't, then you're wrong. So, we recently got the Rebirth, and by recently I mean today, and the Rebirth is pretty good. Some people are saying it's not as good as the X and End, and yeah, that's fair. Except, can the X and End get four Vanguard attacks with all of them being Twin Drive? Fuck no. So, let's go ahead and get this deck profile started, shall we? First up, we have our starter and Lizard Runner combo. By the way, this is deck profile is very different than my normal ones, because normally I follow an archetype. This is the one time I built this deck not on an archetype. It's still based off of a gimmick in the sense that it is built to take full advantage of the reverse's abilities. That's what this deck is meant to do. It's not meant to win. If it wins, cool. But it's meant to take full advantage of the reverse abilities and hopefully hit four Vanguard attacks. Hope is at least three, but preferably four. Anyways, combo a starter, grade zero, boost, tank, a shield, a 6k base, auto, and sword upon you went second, draw a card. So you draw a card, and then if you went second or your opponent's Vanguard, you're going to get a quick show ticket to your hand. So, standard starter ability. Not too special about it. You get that draw, you possibly get that quick shield. The main reason why it's Comro. If your main grade three is an overlord, your starter has to be Comro. If Comro is not your starter, you are not playing this deck. End of story. I do not care if you can't afford it. I don't care if you have to go buy the Japanese version or like go punch someone in the face at your locals and steal the card. You have to have this as your starter if you're playing overlord. If you don't, then you're not an overlord player. You're just a scrub. So anyways, onto our triggers. <laughs> we run not rainbow, but we run 6-6 six, six in draws and crits, 2 embodiment of spear tar, 2 toxic folly dragon, 4 wyvern guard barria is our drop pg, grade 0 boost, 0 shield, 5k base, continuous sentinel, you may have to force on your deck and auto guard is placed on guard circle, discard 1, choose removes, got up into the battle, standard pg, and 4 crits in anger, horror, and dragon. So 6 crit, 6 draws, my reasoning for this is to get the rebirth full ability off, and what I mean by this is, the first effect to restand, you only need to lock one, but its second effect inquires that you lock five. And I really want to make sure that at all times, or like most of the time, I can hit that four restand mark, which means I have to lock five. And while, yeah, locking five doesn't sound that hard, it's just five rear guards. Well, you have to have rear guards to begin with to lock, and then you have to have hand cards to discard for the restand. Thankfully, that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting the rear guards to kill, I mean to lock. So that's why you run the draws to fill up your hand and you run the crits to, uh, you know, add pressure to the multi-attack of Vanguard. Now, if you wanted to run the crit sentinel over the draw PG because saving of hand cards, I can see that. Sure, but I still think you should stick with the lineup of 6-6 six, six or 8 crit, 4 draws, or four or 8 draws, 4 crits. I could see either one working. And then we have our heal trigger and Dragon Mage Genjo. That's the normal vanilla heal with 20k shield. If you don't know the reason why I'm running the 20k shield heal, uh, go check out my video with locks, and that pretty much describes to you why I don't like the heal guardians. If you want the short description, it's just that they're detrimental to my playstyle. If you want the full description, like I said, go check out that video. You will most likely get the full description of it. So yeah, that's the reason we run the full heal here. Now we move on to a grade, Ryan, grade 1 lineup. The first card is three copies of Dragon Knight Nasser. I rarely use this guy, but like I said, made to take full abilities of the Rebirth, so we ended up choosing cards that can get rear guards more easily. So Nasir is a grade 1 with boost tank, his shield, AK base, cool art, auto rear at one placed, if your vanguard's a grade 3 or greater, soul boss 1, look at top 7, call up to one grade 3 from one to rear, and shuffle your deck. Okay, plus to this, he calls a grade 3. Yes, none of your grade 3s have rear guards, because except for maybe one, I forgot if it's in this deck or not. But you get to call a grade 3. That's really nice. You don't call it because it's a grade 3. Even if, it, if, even if this deck does have run the one that has a rear guard skill, you don't do it because of that. You do it because it's a way to get a second lock unit. Yes, the only card in this deck that actually costs Soul Blast outside of Nasser is Berserk Dragon and the Rebirth himself, but you don't use the Rebirth second skill with the Soul Blast. I mean, if you want to and you got Soul Blast to spare, go for it, but otherwise you use that soul on Nasir just to get a skill off. All around Nasir is a really good card in this deck. It saves you a lot of time because it makes one card and become two on rear, basically, and that's amazing. I like it. Three of Nasir. Then we have four copies of Flame of Hope Airmo, grade one boost, fit 10k shield, AK base, continuous rear guard. During that battle, that boost dig us plus 3k power and auto rear. When your opponent's rear guards retire during turn, retire and draw a card counter charge one. Okay, this isn't on the case where you're on the rebirth because if you're trying to swing for the four Vanguard attacks, 
you have to be on Dauntless beforehand. So this is basically here for the turns where you're on Dauntless, you're trying to kill the rear guard so you can actually make sure you live to the rebirth turn. That's what Aramo's for. Retire it, get the counter charge back from killing, get that drawback to refresh your hand, and then prepare to call next turn for five units so you can rebirth your opponent to death. That's the reason Aramo's here, not for the rebirth turn himself, but for the turns leading up to the rebirth turn if you choose to go for that four stand attack. But even then, you can still use him on the rebirth turn if you're not just going for the each attack thing. It's because the second skill involves you, second half of that restand skill for the second time involves you um, having four more damage. So if you don't have four more damage, you can just use him to sack himself, counter charge one, and draw a card as you murder a rear guard. So Aramo's really good. Nice grid one. Plusing off of just, I mean, I guess refunding a cost and changing out a rear guard is still pretty good in this deck. And the fact he's in 11k booster is really nice, so four of. Now we have four copies of our last grade one in Dragon Knight. He shot. Grade one boost, 10k shield, AK base, auto rear one, place counter boss one, just soul boss one, draw a card, choose one of your opponents back for rear guards and retire it. Yep, you guessed it. It's here because I basically looked up any card that can draw and I shoved it in. Like I said, that soul is not for um the rebirth. If you end up getting the soul for the rebirth, good on you. Use its skill. Otherwise, use that soul for stuff like he shot to get draws or berserk dragon when you're on vanguard with berserk dragon or specifically nasser to abuse with so yeah that's why this is here it gets you that draw that's nice it gets you a guaranteed draw regardless of something dies and auto when it's wrote upon look at top five choose reveal to one grade three from them put it to your hand and shuffle your deck really nice also just a thing about that soul blast uh i think one of the few cards i think there are only a few cards in the deck like carabas i think this is one of them i think it's berserk this torrid and overlord the rebirth so really nice that basically for the cost of the rebirth and a counter blast it's just this, you draw a card and you get to kill something in the back row, so that's really nice. But anyways, the top five search, really helpful. I cannot tell you how many times that has gotten me out of binds because every Kagura deck refuses to give me a fucking grade three before I get to grade three turn. Why, I don't know. I am cursed with this. The only time I am not cursed in just the nation of Dragon Empire is when I'm playing goddamn Narukami Vanquisher. But Narukami Vanquisher does the opposite of the problem. Instead of giving me no grade threes, it gives me six before before I even get to grade three, <laughs> without me even trying. <laughs> he, he shots just nice, he saves me out of binds, he gets you draws, he gets you kills. No reason not to run him, main grade one, four of, on van by the way. Th this is the main grade one on rear, but you don't want to run it four of because one's more cost blast. Then we have our grade twos, four copies of Berserk Dragon. Like I said, any card that had a draw skill, I basically shoved in the stack. Grade two, intercept five, K shield, 10 K base, auto van or rear one, place counter boss one, soul boss one, nuke one of your opponent's rear guards. So same thing as heat shot, except it picks the rear guard in the anywhere, not just specifically the back row. And if it was on van, you draw a card. So that's the other thing. Heat shot draws when it's placed, this one doesn't unless it was on van, but that's still pretty good. And auto rear when attacks, if you have three, if you have more rear guards in your opponent, it gets plus three K for the battle. Like I said, turns that you're not on the rebirth you are going to be swinging with your rears the reason why i specify this is because the rebirth is an i believe it's a mandatory lock five it's either not a mandatory lock five or it's just a choice but if you don't do it he essentially doesn't get his skills like that's the thing with the rebirth either you don't lock five and you're he becomes a vanilla or you lock everything on your board and he at least gets one skill or two skills so that's the thing with the rebirth that's why he's weird but he, this thing's so good i like the berserk dragon really nice get you a kill possibly get you a draw on van and not to mention that he can do something outside of when you're on the rebirth so four of and then we have four copies of Tord Cannon Dragon, another knight grade one, I mean grade two, that I think is better than Berserk Dragon once we get to the rear game. Grade two, intercept, 5k shield, 10k base, act van or rear, once per turn, card boss one, shove an army to drop them to the bottom of the deck. Yeah, that's going to be happening a lot with your discards. Choose an opponent's grade two, less rear guard, murder it, and if you have four less hand cards, draw a card. Yeah, when you have to constantly call five, assuming your opponent is also nuking your board as fast as you're nuking theirs, more or less, that draw kind of comes in to help you. Just saying, and not to mention he can still kill rear guard and prevent you from decking out. Because when you're attacking four times a turn with your vanguard, assuming you see no triggers, you're still losing eight deck cards. Plus your draw for turn, so you're losing nine deck cards. You've already lost five. You would have had to made it to grade three for this. You would have had to, God knows how many hand cards. You you are definitely close to decking out when you play this deck. So Torrid helps refund that. Either way, amazing grade two, love it, four of. 
And then we move on to our last grade two, four copies of Break Breath. Like I said, did anything that had a draw skill. All of our grade twos have draw skills. Uh, so Break Breath, um, auto rear at the end of the battle, the attack. If your opponent's rear guard retired this turn, retire it, draw a card. So pluses to that, it can attack anything. If a rear guard died regardless by effects or by battle, even if it was the thing it swung into, really nice, just a free kill, draw. And it doesn't cast counter blast or soul blast. So if you're not on the rebirth, you can skill, you can kill him. Get that draw so they can't kill it themselves and then you get that hand card to either protect yourself next turn or to call down the following turn to make sure that you can still use the rebirth and that's what i like about this card and auto was wrote upon choose an opponent's rear guard retire it and if you do not retire draw a card so that's really good he can choose to kill a rear guard you get to pick the rear guard granted it's a mandatory pick if there is one but if something doesn't die because maybe your opponent's not rushing you draw all around break breast an amazing grade two I like it and this is my reason for telling people fuck heal guardians because like people say heal guardians are to stop rush i mean yeah that's true but uh there are ways to stop rush outside of heal guardians heal guardians are just the newer version of that just saying take that as you will i'm not a pro player but i definitely know there were plays before where they were meant to stop rush so i don't know why but the people make a big deal out of it whatever anyways break breath amazing grade two cost no counter boss first goes get your draws all around nice card four of and then we move on to our grade threes. So apparently it isn't here. I did remember to be smart about this. Two copies of Cruel Dragon. I would have bumped it up to three if I had space. Grade three, twin drive force gift, 13k base, continuous hand during your turn, which your opponent's rear guard retired this turn. You can call this card even your vanguard's grade two or less. Yeah, so that won't be happening on grade one unless you got grade locked and you have to have the damage for heat shot. But uh, if you're on grade two and you got either of these two on your board, yeah, you're getting a Cruel Dragon out to board. So that's a plus. That is just a straight up plus. And Auto Rear, when his attack hits a Vanguard, bounce it to hand, Soul Charge 1. So um, here's the reason you run this. It's the Soul Charge skill, not the first one. Because the first skill, I mean, yeah, grade 3 rushing your opponent is good and all. But like if you're going second, then that doesn't do much. And if you're going first, okay, depending on what deck they're playing, then it does something. But doesn't do much. You run it for the on-hit soul charge. It basically forces them to guard now, and then you crit sack them to death later when they can't defend themselves, or they take it, and then you get to abuse the shit out of things like Nasser over here. Yeah, that's what Cruel Dragon is here for, and you would think that's a dumb reason to run it, and yet it works to a very stupid extent. Two of Cruel Dragon. If you're wondering how I know this, I did test this deck out before I did this video. It was stupidly good and very funny. I didn't get to pull out the full restand. I almost got to do it, but I got scared. I chose to ride the rebirth instead of trying to G assist into a Dauntless, which wasn't a good idea, but yeah, fuck it. Then we move on to our other grade threes, the grade three that you're probably going to ride first if you're trying to take full advantage of the rebirth. Dauntless Drive Dragon, grade three twin drive force gift, 13k base, auto van. At the end of the battle, your draft can field two or more normates. One of your front rear guards plus 10 for the turn. Cool, so on the turn that you're not, and the reason why I specify you run Dauntless in this deck, Dauntless requires you to call one to two rear guards to be good. Like, how, when I was locked into only playing with Counter Blast during that short time when me and my friend would only play on area, Dauntless, like I said before on, the later, on an earlier video, was one of my main grade threes because his skill cost no counter blast and or soul blast, and not to mention mostly cargo cards cost counter blast. And that was really easy to abuse with my drive chicks. So I would only ever call two rear guards and both of them would be the front row. So I'm not losing too much hand outside of his skill. I'm still getting numbers and I'm still murdering their board. That's why Dauntless is here. That skill is good. It either makes it so that you're guaranteed a plus 10 from your drive check or whatever. And it's not a once per turn, which means if both of your drive checks reveal no triggers, well, good for you. And auto van, once per turn, at the end of the battle, it attacked. If your hand has four more cards, which is very easy to do in this deck, discard three, stand this unit. So, yeah, very simple. It's not too strong. It's not too bad. The only downside is you have to have four hand cards, and that might screw you over, considering you got to drop three for it. But... Hey, you know, I do discard two triggers off the time when I use this skill, and I have still yet to lose whenever I use this card. So my argument is that is a good cost. And auto, when it's wrote upon, choose one of your vanguards against all these cards. Auto abilities, other than this ability for the turn. Basically meaning, when your drive checks reveal tr no triggers, both of them, your you one of your rear guards gets plus 10. When you have eight drive checks, and sorry, when you have four different drive checks for a total of eight drives, and each of them is giving plus 10 if you don't see triggers. That's a total of plus... Actually, wait, no, never mind. That wouldn't work with you yet because you have to give it to rear. That's why I think that's like they future-proofed this so far in advance for the rebirth. I highly doubt they did future-proof it specifically for the rebirth. But if they thought that far ahead because of that, I'd be damned. But yeah, 
Good skill. Really wish it involved units and not rear guards, because if it did, this would be a little bit more broken, but that's fair. This deck would be a bit too good, but that's still really nice if you try to... Or you can just do Dauntless on Dauntless, because Dauntless on Dauntless would make that plus 20, and it could still do its skills with Dauntless on Dauntless, and you get two restands, but still, all around, it's a nice grade 3. I like it. Gets Vanguard restands, gets numbers, gets skill given, 4 of. And then we move on to the last card in the deck, and our main grade 3, who has a moon in the background! I didn't see this this morning! Oh, it's beauty! Oh, my heartbeat! Ah, oh, my quivering heart! I am now Jamie Alcaraz! The White Wings too. Did it have White Wings? And maybe it had Crippled Wings, but God, that thing looks cool. Like, he looks all worn down in battle. Even his, like, circle behind him looks more physical than it was before in the original art. And now, with, like, and so does the background. It looks all worn down. And his wings, they actually look more pure. Just saying. Anyways, Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base, Dragonic Overlord, The Rebirth! I would play the anime theme. I would play Breaker Spell in the background with Kai saying Dragon Overlord the Rebirth over that. Except I'm going to get copyright struck if I do it. So it's not worth it, but it would be funny. Anyways, his skills. This is the important one because if this one doesn't go off, then neither do the other two. Auto Van at the start of your battle, unless you're playing Wing Joker. Auto Van at the start of your battle phase. Lock all of your rear guards. Must be a minimum of one. Until end of turn, at the end of the next battle, this unit attacks, counter boss one, discard one, stand it. So it's only one restand, but it's a counter boss one, it's a discard one, stand it. Simplest cost of the overlord. They took the V, they took the D overlord's cost, shoved it onto that. Doesn't have to hit, doesn't have to swing into a rear guard, doesn't have to swing into a vanguard, swings into anything. Only thing you have to do is lock all your rear guards. Doesn't matter how many you have, you lock them all. You it must be a minimum of one. So I because it has a cost and it doesn't say mandatory. I'm assuming it doesn't mean it's mandatory. If it is mandatory, cool. If it's not, then this is straight up a vanilla unless you're playing against a uh, Link Joker because the other two skills require you have lock rear guards. But that's a really easy restand skill and that's really nice to have. An auto van, one attacks a vanguard, not once per turn, soul blast one, and for every two locked cards, that's meant to say and for every two, meaning you don't soul blast one for every two, unless the fandom is wrong, because that's where I got this information from, but if the fandom is wrong, so be it. But soul blast one and for every two, so you only soul blast one, you choose an opponent's rear guard, kill it. So if you have four locked cards, which you most likely will, you kill two rear guards. That's really nice, because you can do two attacks with him just by his first skill alone, and that means a total of four rear guards die. And then auto van once per turn at the end of the battle he attacked if you have five or more locked cards and you have four or more cards in damage zone discard another two aka discard your drive check stand him and get a force gift okay plus to this this is the only overlord that comes to my mind that restands and doesn't lose drives outside of the legend the legend is the only one i can think of off the top of my head maybe the great but only the legend are the o is the only other one I can think of that doesn't drop drives when he restands. Oh yeah, and the original end. Those are the only ones I can think of. This one doesn't drop drives either. Three Vanguard attacks without dropping drives. Six total drives. You combine with Dauntless, eight drives. You are not losing this game without a fight to the death. That's all I'm telling you. So, downsides. If you don't use the first skill, unless you're playing against Link Joker, like I said before, this is immediately a vanilla. Plus sides. If you're at limit break and you have five locked cards, you get two Vanguard attacks without having to ride from this guy. And your opponent doesn't have to be at grade three for any of this. And it's only a Soul Blast of one to basically kill two rear guards. And when he restands, you get a Force Gift. Typically, Overlord's a Force 2 deck in my mind. Guess what? Now it's a Force 1 deck because you just keep shoving Force 1s on this bitch until you just can't guard him. Yeah, um... Do I need to explain why he's good? Like, we, we get the gist. 8 drives, restand, murder rears for, like, the simplest of cost. Um... Four Vanguard attacks consecutively on his own three. It's not really that hard to hit four damage, especially if you play my play style. It's really easy to hit four damage before you hit grade three. In fact, bet right now I could probably do his entire skill while my opponent's at grade two if it's not the people that I constantly play against that know how I play. Because half the time I go to four damage before I get to grade three on purpose. This card is a perfect example of that, and it's good. Four of the rebirth. I do not need to explain why. Amazing ass grade three. And then we move on to our guess. Five force one. This is the only one you need. I'm, I'm joking. You can go force two if you're planning on like if you think your opponent's gonna last 
Um, if you think the longer the game drags out, go Force 2. But like, if you maybe don't have the Rebirth, or you want to kill them that turn, and you still don't have the Rebirth, go Dauntless. Basically what I'm saying is, you don't have the Rebirth, and maybe the only other copy of it you've seen so far has gone into the damage zone, go Force 2 if you have to ride Dauntless. Otherwise, just get Force 1 to stack numbers. Because while yes, Force 2 of Dauntless is really good, numbers are far more important in a deck with a re-standing Vanguard. Like, fuck. Especially if the Vanguard re-stands three times. So, Force 1 and Force 2 are kind of similar in the sense that when they're acquired, they go on Banner Rear. They can be put on the same circle multiple times, so the difference is Force 2 does not stack for its wording, and Force 1 does. So, Force 1, the unit on that circle is plus 10 during your turn, so if you have 1 on a circle, plus 10. If you have 3 on a circle, plus 30. You have 5 on a circle, plus 50. So, if you put them all on the Rebirth, plus 63. Plus 63. That's, that's fun. I mean, not plus 63. It becomes a 63. So, that's pretty good. That's pretty good numbers, especially because you're getting force gifts during your battle, meaning their calculations might get fucked over depending on what uh, you get during your triggers because you're getting stronger from the drag checks and the skill. And the force two, your original critical becomes two. If it's a plus one, then instead of, if it just said the critical plus, because your Vanguard's critical becomes plus one or the unit on a circle becomes plus one, then yeah, it wouldn't, then it would be stackable. Unless it said the original critical gets plus one, then it wouldn't be stackable again. But yeah, because it says the original critical becomes two, it is not stackable. So Bushy did nice wording there. So unfortunately in this deck, it is not worth giving up the numbers for just because once more, restanding Vanguard four times. That is a number you do not want to fuck with. Like the reason why you do it in the other Overlord decks with Force 2 is because you're not losing your entire board for a restand of the Vanguard only. I mean, it's still worth it because Screw it. It's you at least have two four skips. You probably shoved on van, so at least thirty three. So that's a number you can live with four times, especially without counting triggers. So yeah, that's why you do this. Force one, I think is the way to go. You're only gonna need five. I doubt you will ever get to five. If by some miracle you get to five, you're probably going to deck out. But whatever, five force ones, five force twos. But you're probably gonna pick force one most of the time. Like I said, unless the only other rebirth you've seen so far is hit the damage zone, you have Dauntless in hand. Then we have our quick shield, which is when one of you that's a tactic, it's plus 5k for the battle. Nothing too special about it, standard shield. You typically use it for discard. This deck has so many discard options, that's what you use it for. You discard for rebirth, you discard it for dauntless, you use it for nothing else. Fuck guarding with it. <laughs> Unless you have to. And that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. All around this deck is really fun. You get the possibility of four re Vanguard restands. Um, yeah, Nova's did it. Now it's Overlord's turn. I made a joke with my friend before saying Novas are always the first to do something, but Bushy gives them like the shit end of the stick with it. Yeah, they gave them the good end of the stick with it, with it with fighting Emperor Dragon. Now we can attack four times with Overlord. I think Overlord got the better end of this chick, but whatever. I think it's good. Four Vanguard attacks with the simplest cost without the opponent having to be at grade three. They're probably dying to this if you sack one crit and Dauntless is your backup. So, yeah, I think your opponent's lost, and the second one of these gets the Vanguard and they see the other one, you should just say, GG, Scoop Man, nice game, the shake hands, leave, walk out, etc. Yeah, so <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. That's the, quick, that's the description of this deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to check, I mean, don't forget to stand up your Vanguards.